find the food type. And welcome to Mendeley 101. We are your presenters today. I am Holly Hubenschmidt. I'm one of your librarians at Webster University Library here in St. Louis. And I'm Marianne Irwin. My picture's on the left and Holly's on the right of the slide. Um, and welcome to the webinar. So we're talking to you today about Mendeley. We're very excited about this product. It's something relatively new to us here at Webster University Library, but we think it's pretty important. Um, if you're doing any kind of significant research project, you need to stay organized. And that's one of the best ways that Mendeley can help you. It's going to collect citations as you do your research. It's going to help you organize your references, your documents, and build your own database of your research. You'll be able to access it anywhere, annotate those documents as you read them, so add notes, highlight, and then easily cite the references in your paper. There are a variety of products that are out there that do it. Um, that, that do this type of thing. We think Bendeley is definitely one of the best. Um, we have added it here uh, to Webster's um, menu of products, the library's uh, menu of databases and other products that we do offer to help you out. Um, basically, this is what you're going to end up with. What would you do if you could cite with just a few clicks? And this is exactly where we're going to end up at the end of this um, half hour presentation. You'll be in a position where you could be typing in Word and with a few clicks, plug in your citations and plug in your reference list at the end. So to get started, you want to go just out on the web to Mendeley.com and sign up for an account. When you create an account, Use your Webster or your Eden email. We have an institutional version of Mendeley. There is a freely available version just out on the web, but if you sign up with your Webster or your Eden email, you automatically get all the benefits of that institutional version. And Holly, just let me in interject here. When you're creating your free Mendeley account, that's yours for life. So it will never go away. That is true. As long as you are, uh, as long as the web exists and the form it exists today, you um, will be able to get into your Mendeley database that you build and access those resources that you put there. So once you go ahead and create your account, it's automatically going to prompt you to install the desk, uh, desktop download. And you just have to follow the instructions, um, download it, install it, open it, just as you would any other product, and, um, and you'll have it on your computer. We are in the process of having this installed on computers throughout the Webster University network, so throughout all of, all of the public computers in the library currently have it. Um, it it's being installed across the broader network. If you are a faculty member or a staff member and want to use Mendeley, you will have to put in an IT work order to have it installed on your, uh, your university computer. So this is what Mendeley is going to look like as you're building your, your research database. And it's a little bit overwhelming, so we wanted to just break down the desktop for you and show you how it's organized. Over on the left is an overview of your sources. The upper left shows you all of your library, all of the folders that are there for you. There are several uh, folders that are kind of given to you. They're automatically there, the recently added folder, the favorites folder. Um, and then you can create your own folders to keep your research organized so you can have multiple projects going at once. The lower part of this left side column is your filter area, and this is where you can filter the folder that you're looking at 
so that you look at um, certain authors. If you want to focus on certain authors, if you want to focus on certain tags, you're able to tag each citation. Um, so it, it gives you a variety of ways to manipulate the database so that it's really very easy for you to use. The middle column is all of the contents of your folder, or in this case over on the left, we have all documents highlighted. So this is all of the documents that I have in my Mendeley account. Um, what appears at the top of the column is, um, is my citation style. So right now I've got it set up to everyone's favorite citation style, APA, uh, but there are hundreds to choose from. And over on the right-hand side is the details for one of the sources, the one that I have highlighted in the middle column. So I have highlighted kind of in the middle there, you'll see a slightly bluer bar for Murphy, an article by Murphy, and that gives you all of the details about the article, all the information you need to cite it, the abstract. Up at the top is my toolbar. And here I have the um, ability to, uh, I'm sorry, it, it gives me common tasks that I would do. I would, you know, add files, think, we'll, we'll go into some of these more in detail as we go through the next half hour. You can do a number of things in Mendeley by simply dragging and dropping or right clicking. It, it's a very friendly program. So we do want to go over, there are several different ways to build your document library. And as I said, it's very easy. If you have a PDF of an article saved on your computer, you can simply drag it into Mendeley. Here's an example highlighted in green in the center. It's showing a Watkins article near the bottom that I uh, pulled in just now. It tells me when I pulled it in, so it, it gives me some uh, frame of reference. And over on the right, then, are the details showing me that it's the Harvard Business Review article um, and giving me um, options to uh, do any editing I would want to do on that citation. An additional way, besides just dragging items into my database, I can import records from a library database. So if I'm in an, uh, an EBSCO database like Academic Search Complete and I do a search and mark a few citations, I can easily pull them into my Mendeley library. I simply click on the Export button and you'll find Export in almost all databases. In this case, for the EBSCO databases, it's over on the right. And then I want to select a direct export in the RIS format. This is a common format used among a number of different uh, reference manager products. Once I click Save, I can save the, um, the that RIS file to my computer and then drag it in or open it and save it into Um, add it into my Mendeley uh, library so that then all of those citations that I have marked in my database are now in Mendeley and I can refer back to them as I need them. The new citation that I just pulled in is listed there at the top and it's not quite ready for use yet. In just a few minutes, we're going to show you that a little bit of cleanup is going to really pay off in the end to make this a very valuable um, source to refer back to. So we've covered two ways to get articles, citations, books um, into Mendeley. A third way is to just Add a, add a reference manually. 
over on the left hand side is an icon that says add files and if I click add entry manually um, it's going to give me this box up at the top of the box is a, uh, a box labeled or a menu labeled type and if I pull down that menu I can select article book section um, a legal case a film a website and whichever one I select is going to give me a form that then I can fill out with as much information as I have. In this case, I selected a book section, which is another way of saying a book chapter. So I can put in the author, the title of the book, the title of the chapter, so that it can then um, store that information and pull it out to create a reference when I need it. Is there, um, are there any questions at this point? Please feel free to type them in the chat if you do uh, have anything. And I'm going to be keeping an eye out for them, but I'm also going to turn it over at this point to Mary Ann to continue on. So do feel free to type in any questions as we go. Thank you, Holly. Um, so let's see a couple more ways to add uh, documents to build your document library. And first, the next couple of things that we're going to look at, use a um, use the web importer. So you can import websites or web pages. Particularly, this would be helpful if you do a lot of research in online uh, search tools like Google Scholar or, or Google itself, or even some of the library databases and also the library, the West University Library Catalog or other catalogs. So you download, you can download the Web Importer plugin from the Tools menu on Mendeley Desktop or from the Mendeley Web. There is a plugin for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and IE, so all the, the most used, often used browsers. And here's a brief how-to on how to use the Web Importer. So here is a document that I found on Google Scholar. And I've displayed the document in my, or, or the web page in my browser. And then once I've downloaded the Mendeley Web Importer, you'll see the icon on the browser's toolbar. And in this case, it's in the upper right-hand corner and it's circled in green. So from the Mendeley pop-up box, once I click on the, the Mendeley Web Importer, just click Save. Here we've downloaded both the PDF and the reference into our Mendeley library. Um, also in that pop-up box, you'll see a box labeled Web Library. So you can view the reference on Mendeley Web by clicking on that button. Some documents found in Google Scholar and in some of our library databases feature a Mendeley Save button, which allows you to save directly to Mendeley. In this, on this slide, you can see that on the screenshot on the left. So it's got the little Mendeley logo with Save next to it. And so when you click that, it just automatically saves directly into your Mendeley account. So on the lower right of that of this slide, it shows in Mendeley Web how these two things that we've just imported into Mendeley Web using the Web Importer, how those show up in Mendeley Web. Another way to build your document library is to import books from the library catalog. And library catalogs are in essence, uh, online library catalogs are in essence websites. So in this example of, from the Webster University Library Catalog, what I've done is I've done a search. I selected two books and displayed, used the uh, catalog display records. So select the books and then display them. And then, again, I click on the 
uh, Mendeley Web and Porter icon, and then when it pops up with the with the um, importer box, I just click Save, and I've saved those two books to my Mendeley library. A third, another way to import or to add references to your Mendeley library is using the Mendeley Literature Search. Mendeley Literature Search is a catalog of millions of records that all Mendeley users across the world have added to their own Mendeley libraries. Which, of course, it doesn't attach their names, and it picks the best record. So, for example, you might use this if you have created a research paper in the traditional way, and you input, you put in your citations yourself manually, and now you say, hey, you know, I want to use the citations in later papers. So, what you might do is go to Mendeley Desktop, look at Mendeley in the upper left-hand corner of the left-hand pane, select Mendeley Literature Search, and then that will open the search box in the middle column. Type in some words um, to describe your, um, your target, so maybe the author's last name and maybe some words from the title. Hit enter to search, and Mendeley will search its, its catalog of resources, and hopefully near the top you'll see the target, your, the reference that you want. Once you highlight that in the middle pane, it pops up in the detail pane on the right, and it'll tell you whether the document is already in your library or not. And if it's not, it'll give you the option of saving the reference. And that's all there is to it. So we've looked at several ways to add references. But now let's talk about how we have to clean those up. We'd like to think that Mendeley is magic. but there's nothing magical, unfortunately, about entering your, your um, citations. Um, it, is, it takes a little work and it takes a little organization. And it, takes, it would help if you would do this as you, um, as you import or bring items into your library. But whatever information that the source that you collected or imported are you exported from, it's going to bring that information and some into Mendeley and sometimes it's flawed. So I'm going to, we're going to look at this example. So here's an APA journal article citation and it should look like the top example. So in the top example, we have the author's name and the date of the year of publication, 2015. And then we have the article title. And not that we would highlight these in green, but just so they stand out. I've highlighted in APA citation in the article title the initial words in the title and the subtitle should be capitalized. All other words are lowercase unless they are proper nouns. So in this example, we have some proper nouns, but most of the words in our article title are not capitalized. Then we have the journal in which this article was published, the International Journal of Qualitative Studies in Education. We have the volume number 20 or it volume 28 and issue number seven and then a comma and the page numbers 759 to 785 period and then we have the digital object identifier if the article carries one and not all of not all articles will but mostly journal articles will have DOIs. 
So the DOI is properly formatted with the protocol, the HTTP, before it. However, if you look at the bottom of the screen, this is how this citation looked in Mendeley when I, when I first imported it into my library. So we notice that it imported it with all the significant words in the title in cap. And instead of the DOI, at the end of the citation, it says retrieved from, and it then includes the URL for the database where I captured this particular, where I, ex from which I exported this citation. So let's talk about how to clean up those citations. First, I'd like to make it clear something that Holly showed. So this is how you actually view the cite your citation as view your library in that middle column on the Mendeley desktop. View your library as, uh, as citations and choose your citation style. So from the Mendeley desktop, click View, and then from the library as citation, click Citation Styles and open that window. And we've chosen American Psychological Association or the APA Manual 6th Edition. And then, and then once you activate that, all your citations in that are showing up in your middle pane of your depth of your desktop will show up in the APA citation style. You can use whatever citation style you, you like. But before we leave this, I also want you to take a look very quickly at, and it's circled in green, near the bottom of the slide, there's a, a there's some, the words more style. And we're going to look at what you're going to do with this in just a minute. But that's important, so keep, so keep that in mind. All right, so there are three major ways that citations need to be cleaned up. The first one is what we've seen is that fix the capitalization, okay? So at the top of the screen here, I have the citation, and on the detailed pane, you can see um, on the right, you can see the citation with the capital with the capitals and they're incorrect. Sometimes, by the way, Mendeley can fix this, but sometimes um, it, it doesn't. So if it doesn't, you want to go in, particularly if you're using APA style, uh, and fix it there. So click in the box and fix your um, fix your capitalization, and sometimes you'll see cap capitalization errors in other fields like the authors, um, et cetera. So fix those, click in the box on the detailed view, and fix those, er those um, capitalizations, and you'll see that Mendeley automatically fixes it in the title, in the main, in the middle column. Now, the second way, remember we saw that long database hyperlink at the end where we should have had the DOI. So, remember that more styles? From that view of citation styles, if you click more styles, it'll show you all the citation styles that are available in Mendeley and down beneath or below that list of citation styles, you will see a line that reads, include URLs and date access in bibliographies. And you want to change that from for all document types to only for web pages. And once you do that, which is the proper citation style for APA, it will fix those, it will fix all your journal citations that are in my library, in your library, 
it'll fix them all simultaneously so that you, you only have to do that once. Unlike for the titles, you'll have to fix those for each citation. The third thing to look at is you need to move or add the DOI to the correct field. So often those DOIs, when you bring them in, particularly when you bring them in from a database, will be stored in the URL field. So we've turned off the database URL, but we still see that DOI. So what you do is just copy from the number 10, all DOIs start with the, the number 10, and then a period, and it can be any number of alphanumeric codes after that, but they start with a 10. So copy from that 10 to the end of the DOI, copy it and go down to below the URL and paste it in the DOI field. Once you're finished with that, if we were looking at the, the My Library listing, you will now see that the citation looks the way it's supposed to look. So it's all fixed. When we first talked about cleanup, this part really scared me that it would be big and hairy and messy but it really is not bad, and it really is worthwhile. It seems like to take just those few minutes to then know that I'm very secure in any time I need to cite that article, it's correct. And if you don't do it, or if you've missed something, um, do you, when you go to add it to a document, um, which is one of the wonderful tools that we're gonna talk about here in a minute in Mendeley, when you go to insert that into um, insert, insert that reference list into a, into your um, document in Word in your paper in Word, um, you'll notice that if if you've made a mistake, you'll notice, and you can always go and you should at that point go back into the Mendeley reference and fix it there, and then it's fixed forever. Okay, so now. We just want to talk just a little bit about organizing our references. So as you add more and more references, you want to also think about how you're going to use those references and add some organization. So as Holly pointed out, the, col the column or the pane on the left in Mendeley Desktop shows my library. And there you have two options at the bottom of the My Library list to create a folder, or you can create a folder from the toolbar, from the Mendeley toolbar. So think about how you will use and how you will look for your different references. Um, so if you think about that, you can create folders maybe based on a class or based on a paper or if it's a big paper, you might create a folder based on particular portions of your, of your paper that you want to cover. So think that through. Then on the, another way to organize would be on the details pane or column on the right, in the details for that particular item, you'll see that you can add tags. Tags are rather like subject headings or tagging photos, tagging people in photos on social media. So you can set those up to be whatever you like. So you might want to add a tag for the, what subject the author is about. You might want to add a tag for other authors that agree with this particular um, article. So there's various ways that you could think about adding tags. It's also easier to add multiple tags to the record than to take and drag, once you have your folders set up, drag your citations, you drag your citations into the folders 
and you can have multiple, you can have this, uh, the same citation in multiple folders. So if, you, if you're going to use it that way, you might think instead about adding tags. And then on the left-hand menu, once you've added your tags and you're thinking about adding those consistently and systematically to your article, you can filter by those tags. So um, that's at the bottom of the column on the left. Now, we've been doing most of our work in the desktop version, and we've said that there is a web version, a Mendeley web version. So if you've made any changes to your desktop version of Mendeley, and you would like to be able to access those, your entire library, from the web version of Mendeley, you have to sync the two. So on the toolbar, you'll see a button for sync. So simply click that button and it will and Mendeley will automatically make all your changes, send all your changes that you made in the desktop version over to your to the web version. So we talked about other tools. So we talked about install the web importer. So from the tools menu on Mendeley desktop is that important plugin for using, for incorporating Mendeley citations into Microsoft Word. So you have to download that from the Mendeley desktop tools. You get the install the Microsoft Word plugin. And then when you open Word, you can see if you click on the references tab in Word, you can see a button for inserting citations. So you just place your cursor where you want to insert an in-text citation. Click on Insert Citation, and Mendeley, Mendeley will lead you through the process of inserting a space holder for that citation in your document. Then, when you're finished, writing your paper, or at any point while you're writing, move to the end of your paper where, you were, where your reference list would go, put your cursor there, and then from the Word menu, choose Insert Bibliography. And voila, Mendeley will insert a reference a citation in your reference list for every citation that you included in your in-text citation within your document. So you see how important it might be to make sure that you're cleaning those citations up as you go along um, so that you don't have to end up cleaning them up at the end. So you can do that. It's a lot more magical if you clean them up as you go. Right. Okay, so we talked, there is also a mobile app for Mendeley, so there's an app for that. So if you want to access your documents, your PDF documents, for, if, for instance, that you have um, saved to Mendeley, you can access those on a mobile app, so you can read in line at the grocery store and annotate and highlight articles um, on the go. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to get help. So from the library web page, near the bottom half of the screen, of, of the library homepage, under research help, um, first, um, next we're going to talk about research guides, but first, just comment about citation guides. So those of us who work in the library and help students with citation all the time, we know what um, what a citation style, you know, what a citation should look like for different formats. But if you don't, and if you need help fixing your citations for your document cleanup, 
click on that citation guide, and we have um, a guide for each of the major citation styles, which will show you some, we call them kind of tip sheets or cheat sheets, that will show you how to create a citation for different formats of different information. So if you need to know what, how, you, how you need to clean up your citation, that citation guide will be very helpful for you. And then if you would like more help or more information about Mendeley, if you click on research guides from the library homepage, we have created a Mendeley research guide. So that guide will help you with different tabs across the top for things like getting started, building your research library, um, from RefWorks to Mendeley. So if you have a RefWorks account now um, and you, which the library has, that's been the citation manager that the library has supported for several years, but we are discontinuing support of that as of May the 31st. So if you have a RefWorks, if you have some citations in RefWorks, it's pretty easy just to export them from RefWorks and import them into Mendeley, and that tab will tell you how to do it. You have tabs for how to organize your research, do and annotate PDFs. You have the Mendeley citation plugin, how to get it and how to use it. Um, and, there, and then there's a tab for share and collaborate. And there's a tab for helpful resources. And under that helpful resources, you will see both um, handouts or printed, uh, or sorry, um, documents that both we and Mendeley have created, and also some uh, videos that have been created to help you get started quickly with Mendeley. Also, from that homepage of the Mendeley homepage, you see the link to contact a librarian for help. And below that, there is a box called Mendeley Support. So you are welcome and encouraged to contact Mendeley directly if you have questions about installing and using Mendeley. And you'll notice that you can email the form. They have help online, but you can email a form or there is, there's a phone number for different regions across the world that so that you can get so that you can access Mendeley. So there's much more to learn and watch for. So watch for additional information coming to that research guide on groups on annotating and note and making notes in PDFs and importing from RefWorks into Mendeley. You can also sign up for our upcoming webinar, Mendeley 102, which will be uh, presented on April 4th from 1 to 1.30 Central Daylight Time. And always remember, if you have questions, that your librarians are here to help in questions not only about Mendeley, but we're here to help. And if you, um, from the library homepage, if you click on Ask a Librarian, you can get access to um, the contact information for our wonderful staff of librarians who staff our research desk. Um, so do let us know if you have questions. Anything else to add, Holly? I think that covered it. This was a lot of information. So if you do have any questions, please type them in the chat box. Um, this pretty much wraps up our webinar, but we will linger for a few minutes and see if there's anything we can do to help anyone further. And I'm sorry for about, about going over, but we're at 37. Uh, we're at um, almost 40 minutes, so we're a little bit over, but we realized after we started that we have a lot of information that we wanted to give you. Okay, so we're not seeing any, we're not seeing any questions, so we will be sending out this uh, webinar to those who registered for the webinar. We will send out the recording in a couple of days, but please let us know if you, if you have any questions or suggestions Good night. Thank you. Oh, what is